Good morning, everyone. Welcome on board. I hope you're doing great. We're talking about the best ships today in X4 Foundations, now in 6.0 with Kingdom End and all the DLCs. We finally should take a look at all the ships that are in the game and see which ones are the best. With the addition of the Boron ships, you're asking yourself maybe, are the Boron ships the best? I can tell you, no, they are not the best, but sometimes they are the best choice that you can get and we're going to see exactly when that applies and i will give you my own opinion on which ship is the best for which situation and we're starting with the s-class ships fighters and scouts for that i have a good comparison at the moment here with some of the ships that we have discussed before my previously my best S-Class ship in the video that I did two years ago was the Aris. And after that, after Tides of Avarice came in, I always said, you know what? The She is slightly better. As you can see right here, everything is compared to the Aris. The She has got almost in every single category green numbers and is just better as the Aris. And... On top of that, we're now having Kingdom End and we're adding into that the Barracuda, which is another heavy fighter that we're going to compare to the other ships that were previously the best. As you see, we're lacking hull, we're gaining a little bit of shield. The shields are not as good as it appears. The Boron S-Class shields are okay, but they're almost comparable to the Terran S-Class shields or just the simple Paranid S-Class shields. The Barracuda is very agile, which means your pitch and roll are extremely good. So you can face the enemy extremely fast, but what it's lacking is the most or the biggest contra I have for the Barracuda is the speed. The acceleration and the speed are just so bad. The travel speed may be high, but with the kind of acceleration you got, you will most likely not reach that travel speed in a decent amount of time. The design choice behind that for Egosoft was to make carriers more valuable. We'll talk about that in the best L-Class video later on. But Barracudas are having a use case where you put them on a carrier, you fly with your carrier into the action and then deploy the Barracudas at the spot where they need to be. So they're extremely slow. Is the Barracuda better than the She in this case? I would say no. Is the She better than the previous best S-Class ship, the Rs? Yes. What is the best heavy fighter at the moment i would still say it's the she kingdom end did not add anything to that now here to add one more ship into the equation is the gladius another heavy fighter and now everything compared to the she you see most of the ships do have red numbers which indicates they are worse than the she only your pitch roll strafing those are the things where the other ships are better but i would say that if you are flying the ship yourself and you are at controls the she would still perform really really good the barracuda with high yaw pitch and roll could be still better for the ai to fly in scenarios where they need to hunt down very agile targets like for example cock ships or maybe some xenon ships where they need to fly independently in a fight before we start talking about all the other ships let me just tell you really quick that i'm using the equipment that is given by the faction so the air Aris was equipped with paranet stuff the she is equipped with basically everything because it's just a, a vigor ship that doesn't really have any preferences the barracuda of course can only have boron stuff the gladius is equipped with mostly terran stuff so i do that with all the other ships when we're moving forward 
Now, you don't always want to go heavy fighters. Sometimes you just want to go with normal fighters to save some money to have larger groups that are fighting. And in this case, we're going to compare everything to the Marco. Marco is the new Boron ship that got introduced in Kingdom End. It's uh, the standard fighter with two weapons and basic equipment. If you compare all the stats here with other factions, uh, ships that got introduced in the last two DLCs, we have the Kid and the, the Koba, which I would say are the most comparable ones. All three of them have two weapons on board and are the cheaper option if you want to get fleets going or let's say fighter fleets that are engaging in huge numbers as we see the mako is somewhere in between not really the best not really the worst the kid is offering a little bit less hull a little bit more sh but that's just negligible it doesn't really matter the tacoba on the other hand has got one more shield and therefore is a little bit tankier the other ships are also, again, faster, which is like, as I said, the design language for the Boron smaller ships that they are being deployed from carriers. So they are lacking speed and the most important acceleration, which means that they are never going to get their travel speed in a decent amount of time, even though the kid has got less than 50% of the travel speed of the Mako, it will just simply be faster when you're flying around from A to B in a sector, not when you use it for long travel into other sectors. Because of course, if you are using the flight assist in your advantage by disabling it whenever you're changing directions, so yeah, you can get from A to B very fast with the Mako. With the Mako. For fighting so far, Mako, good option. If you need something on the cheaper side so that you can get high numbers out, I would go with the kid. Very quick look at the Asp and the Asp Raider from the split. We're going to see they're way more agile. The Asp Raider is being a little bit of a glass cannon, very low hull. The Asp itself is good, high hull, but you're lacking shield power there with um, split shields, of course. Two other ships thrown into this equation uh, are the Mamba and the Nova. The Nova representing basically all the vanilla ships, which are decent but don't really have any advantages in a specific direction. You do really gain advantages with the ships from the DLCs. As you see, the Mamba is another two-weapon ship and has got the highest hull and highest shield and could be called one of the better S-Class simple fighter options, but is also a little bit more expensive to produce and therefore only an option if you want to spend a little bit extra. Moving on to the scouts, you have an interesting option here with the Boron ships, with the Eero Kanji. The Eero Kanji seems to me like being one of the best scouts you can get. Travel speed without any modifications is extreme with 10,700 and a boost speed of 6,000. That thing is just fast. If you need something to explore the galaxy with or to send out for exploring missions or whatsoever, the Irukanji is possibly the best choice now in the game. Here compared to discover a Vanguard and a Jaguar and I will also throw a few others in here. Like, for example, the Terran Nimcha and the Pegasus Sentinel. This time, the Pegasus Sentinel with Paranit Travel Engines. Even with Paranit Travel Engines Mark III, the Pegasus has got a hard time to keep up with the Irukonji as a scout. So, scout ships, Boron, great. That is like the first really great option that you should always get if you can. The Irukonji as your scout to send around in the universe. For careers, S-Class careers, I just simply hit the high preset setting and we're going to take a look at those. We have the Terrapin, which is the Boron version, Frog, Terran and Raleigh is the Vigor Syndicate version. So the most recent careers we got in X4. 
Just simple speed, the Raleigh is better, almost twice as good as the Terrapin, which can be good if you're using uh, that courier in Sector, because in Sector you will not get to use travel mode that much than uh, outside of sectors and flying from sector to sector. So if you have the use case that you need to bring stuff fast from station A to station B, which is just, let's say, at the other side of the sector, but talking about S-Class couriers, we don't really use that much container storage because then we would go up and take just an M-Class ship. So it doesn't really make sense to get a Frog, which is way, way more expensive than a Raleigh or a Terrapin, just to haul double the amount of wares. That, that price difference will not make up for that. But if you have stations that you want to supply with a little bit of stuff that are just one jump gate away, Terrapin would be a viable option there. So that's for my overview of the S-Class ships in X4 Foundations. Not a big deep dive into those ships because I think S-Class ships are really down to most cost effective. How can I get a lot of, of them uh, on my map? So in uh, good in numbers. And then if I want to fly one myself, which one is the strongest? Which comes down to what I was talking about. And that will give you an idea of how the new ships perform, how they are located into uh, the all the other ships. At the moment I'm doing a Boron only playthrough, so I'm locked into these Boron ships. And I can tell you, I'm not flying the Barracuda myself at all. I'm not flying the Mako myself at all. But I'm jumping all the time into the Irokanji, which is also a fantastic, and this is a bonus tip at the end, a fantastic ship for pirating because you're fast, you're agile, your shield will um, come back pretty fast. So if you stay out of, of, of uh, shots, you will get your shield back. And others, like if you know already the formula, if you go and check out my pirate ship uh, video, what are the best ships for pirating, this ship will lead to other ships bailing pretty fast and you will have a great time doing so because you're just so freaking agile in that thing i love it so last famous words like and subscribe to this channel anyway we'll see us again in the next video where we're talking about m-class ships and that will be definitely a deeper dive i promise